This is an object from the collection of the uh, Museum of Science and Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. This is Martin Wieber's differential engine. Uh, it's a very, very early mechanical calculator uh, and was constructed and used by the inventor Martin Wieber uh, in the mid 1800s to calculate and in fact print logarithmic tables. So this is much more than uh, an ordinary calculator. Uh, this was a sequel to the Scheut machine uh, and Weber's idea was rather than sell a calculator, he would print, he would, ret he would retain his calculator and print logarithmic tables instead. And this, in fact, is not only a readout from the, from the differential engine, it's also a set of printing wheels. Weber was born in 1826 and he died in 1905. He was an enormously productive inventor. Uh, this was by no means his only invention, uh, but he never succeeded in making his fortune. Uh, as you can see, there's a barrel in the middle. This is a rotating barrel. It's divided into 75 segments and then a blank segment at the end here. All the segments are uh, divided into 10 parts and they're numbered 0 to 9. The fifth division uh, is, has a slightly higher ridge than the other nine divisions. There are combs, one that rotates with the cylinder and another one that uh, hangs underneath and is raised and lowered by a cam mechanism here. I'm not sure exactly how the internals work or how the results are transmitted but there are a series of rods small metal rods going between the barrel and the printing wheel here. Uh, the brass parts of this construction are in good condition, but the parts that have been made of steel, as you can see, uh, many of them have got a, a certain amount of rust on them, uh, and behind the printout, some of the small details appear to be completely rusted. It's possible to rotate this to some extent, uh, but at some time this has been, this machine has been dismantled, and in fact it was not correctly put together. Uh, there may still be some discrepancies here that are not exactly right. Uh, everything is dependent on everything else. Uh, it, this is just as, as complicated as setting the timing on uh, an internal combustion engine. The cogs have to mesh at exactly the right tooth, etc., etc. Otherwise, the whole mechanism will jam. There are innumerable cams, springs, catches, levers uh, that all interact. Uh, the amazing thing is that this machine did actually work, worked extremely successfully. And if you think of the number of calculations that have to be done to create a set of logarithmic tables, then this machine was rotated many, many thousands of times without any fault. One of the interesting things that you can see here is the printout. There is a pair of sliding shoes here that mesh into the printing wheel and hold the uh, numbers in place while this printing surface is raised. As you can see, there's quite a lot missing here. This would be a feed, uh, both for uh, printing, for a, a strip of paper, and somewhere there would even be an inking mechanism.
the machine had a handle which is now missing it also had uh, a more substantial undercarriage than it has at the moment the rotation is in this direction uh, you can see that there is a lever here that actuates a cam there uh, which in fact uh, actuates the printing phase at the other end another lever that goes backwards and forwards here and finally this pointer that rotates with the drum and in fact engages with these two cogs here <coughs> that can move this carriage backwards and forwards similarly on the other side the carriage for the comb on the underside here this particular comb is actuated by cams on the lowest cog at the bottom and swings up and down engaging with the barrel at the correct time this was the uh, you might say production version uh, it's believed that Weber produced a prototype and uh, managed to publish his first set of tables round about 1860 uh, but he had trouble in devising the printer uh, and it's not believed that this model was ready before the middle of the 1870s round about 1875 or a year or so before the uh, Philadelphia exhibition this was not actually exhibited at Philadelphia but V based logarithmic tables were uh, he was also awarded the uh, Legion of Honor by Napoleon III for his work uh, and uh, he was in fact uh, highly accredited at the time uh, though as I said he never managed to make his fortune out of this uh, this item is normally on display at the museum in Stockholm <laughs>